children's television during the 1970s was definitely at its peak and was mostly dominated by animated TV shows which were mostly produced by Hanna-Barbera Productions and Filmation Studios. Filmation Studios decided to concentrate more on live-action shows after the hit live-action series Shazam and followed with Arc 2 which aired on CBS from September the 11th until December the 18th of 1976 for only 15 episodes. Inspired by the Bible story of Noah's Ark, the show was set in the post-apocalyptic 25th century in the year 2476 after Earth has slipped back to the Dark Ages and mankind has been almost decimated by the effects of waste and pollution. Mankind's only hope, a group of three young scientists, Commander Jonah, played by Terry Lester, Ruth, played by Jean Marie Hon, Jose Flores in the role of Samuel, and Adam, an intelligent talking chimpanzee, Muchi, voiced by creator and producer at Filmation Studios, Lou Scheimer, who travel in a high-tech vehicle known as the Ark 2, who during their travels seek out and help small surviving groups of people to bring peace and balance to a dying civilization. The three of us, uh, Terry Lester who played Jonah, myself, I played Ruth and uh, Samuel, we were like the police force in this, uh, uh, it was the futuristic society. We were to do good, help society, and it felt good playing a role like that. And hopefully we could teach the kids a thing or two and get them thinking about certain issues of the day. They set me up with wonderful agents and at that time I had an agent. Yeah, they uh, had this lead out for this children's show, Art 2. One of a kind show, a new type of show that it was for Saturday morning, live action with a moral to each story. And I said, that sounds interesting. So I went and met with Lou Scheimer and Norm Prescott and and uh, we had several meetings and I was so glad they said, you're the one. Incidentally, all the main characters had biblical names to stay true to the Bible element the show had to it. The series central characters were created by Martin Roth. Director Ted Post would help Roth develop the series. Ted Post was a highly influential director of television who developed a numerous amount of episodes of well-known TV series, including Rawhide, Gunsmoke, The Twilight Zone, as well as feature films, Beneath the Planet of the Apes, the sequel to the classic Planet of the Apes, and Magnum Force, my favorite of all the Dirty Harry films. The most memorable element of Ark 2 is of course the futuristic looking six-wheeled RV, the Ark 2, that also acts as a mobile laboratory Boy, did we have fun doing Arc 2. We built that piece of machinery and sent it out on a freeway to Paramount Ranch to shoot the series, and people thought they were seeing the space shuttle land. It was really awesome. The 44-foot long vehicle was a fiberglass body over a body of a 1971 Ford C-Series dump truck. It was built on a truck base it was worth about $75, and we spent $75,000 to fill it with this stuff around it. During the production of the series, the actual Arc 2 vehicle was in fact always breaking down between shots and virtually impossible to drive during the night time due to the limited visibility of the vehicle. All the scenes that you see in the main title and where it's really going fast, we shot out uh, towards Edward Air Force Base at uh, Dry Lake and did those with chase cars and all where we didn't have an issue of, of anything else being in the way. But the rest of the time, it, it moved pretty slowly on the roads out at the ranch. And one of the things was it was always breaking down. Many people believe the six-wheeler RV in Arc 2 was built by Dean Jeffries, but this is untrue. Jeffries would build the Landmaster for the feature film Damnation Alley in 1977. The Landmaster was very similar in design to the Ark II, but not the same vehicle. An assumption that people often make. The front end of the Ark II prop was later reused for the nose of the spaceship, the Seeker, in the other Filmation TV shows, Space Academy 
and Jason of Star Command. Other well-known gadgets featured in the Arc 2 series was the jetpack, called the Jet Jumper. The other vehicle in the series was the Arc Roma, a smaller four-wheeled vehicle, which was a Brubaker box kit car built over a chassis of a 1968 Volkswagen. The Roma was carried in the rear of the Arc 2 during the summer of 1976. Most of the series was shot at the Paramount Ranch, which was near Malibu, California. All our ARC-2 episodes were fortunately shot during the summer break, so uh, uh, we did have the benefit of having nice long sunny days, and uh, if, you, if you look at the episodes you'll see that there's never a night scene. We shot pretty much all daylight exteriors except for the interior of the ARC, which was a set that was built on the stage back at the studio. But most of the episodes we shot out at uh, what is now Point Doom State Park, but it was, uh, or Malibu State Creek Park, but it was then the Paramount Ranch and it was, a, it was a wonderful place. It had a lot of sort of old crumbling sets from things like Planet of the Apes and Sand Pebbles and a lot of things that we utilized into Arc 2 itself. The sound effects used in the series were actually the sound effects of the USS Enterprise in the original series of Star Trek. Filmation had used some of the sound effects from Star Trek for the animated series, which they produced in 1973 to 1974. Arc 2 had a number of guest stars including Jonathan Harris, Jim Backus from Gilligan's Island, a very young Helen Hunt. Helen Hunt would make an appearance in episode 5 titled Omega, but the most famous guest star was Robbie the Robot as the title character that was built by Samuel in episode 4 titled The Robot. After the run of Arc 2, a spin-off was proposed by producer Lou Scheimer, which would center around Jonathan Harris as Fagon, a character he played in episode 1 titled The Flies. But this would never happen. They instead cast Harris in the role of Commander Isaac Gampu in the series Space Academy in 1977. For each of the episodes, executive producer Lou Scheimer would first narrate the opening titles under the pseudonym Eric Gundon, actor Terry Lester who played Jonah, would then summarize the backstory of the show. Arc 2 was a highly original premise, especially for a kid's show. I vaguely remember seeing this series when I was a kid. I revisited the show only a few years ago, when I acquired the exclusive box set featuring the whole series of Arc 2, along with the other live action shows, Space Academy and Jason of Star Command. I gotta say, it took me way back. Though dated, it was very enjoyable to watch, especially alongside the other two shows. Arc 2 was definitely something clever and unique for a kids show. My name's Jonathan. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and like what you see on my channel, please subscribe. And if you would like to become a patron on my Patreon, click on the link below.